For this week's video, I would like to present another layout design. Now, unfortunately, this is a design which never got completed for reasons that I will explain later in the video. But I think there are enough good ideas that come out in this design to make it worth presenting. So with that in mind, let's continue. Now, here's a plan of the customs basement. The main train room is approximately 16 feet by 20 and its largest dimensions, although one corner is not available. But he has a long narrow area extending in one end, making the overall length of the site about 36 feet. And if we notice this bay window in this corner makes this area wide enough for a turn back curve. And also the family room around the bottom, he wanted me to use about another three feet of this space along here and possibly around the end as well. So overall, it is a pretty nice size space for a layout, even though designing a layout for it is certainly not gonna be straightforward. Now the customer wanted to represent the Pennsylvania Railroad and he wanted to run some long trains. And he felt that a walking plan without duck unders or lifting sections was highly desirable. Other than that, he was just willing to leave it up to me to see what I came up with. Now notice on this plan, I've put two black dots in this wall here. Those represent the structural support columns. They are four inch diameter steel posts and they can't easily be moved. So I have to avoid those, but otherwise I can pierce this wall anywhere I want to. And he told me to go ahead and use the space under the stairs if I can make it work. So with the walk-in plan desired, the benchwork footprint is pretty much forced. Although it can be adjusted slightly, the best way to get a peninsula in is to have it springing out from the wall behind the door because this end of the room is wider and therefore the turn back curve will fit a little bit better than it would at this end. Now even so, it's a little bit tight. For running large steam and full length passenger cars, you really need an absolute minimum of about 30 inch radius. And with the double track main line that we were anticipating, that means this turn back area has to be a full six feet in width. And then allowing for a three foot aisle around it, the two long walls are really cramped as far as the width of bench work we can have. On the other hand, there is no reason why we can't have a full three foot wide bench work at the end. And since the width of the room is only a few feet shorter than the length, maybe we can bend the main yard around the end instead of cramming it in a space where there really is no room for it. Now I thought this might work because the curves at both ends can be much larger than the minimum radius and therefore I can fit curved turnouts into them. Whereas if I were to use the back wall of the room, which was where the customer first suggested putting the yard, obviously one end has to be a minimum radius curve and that restricts the expansion of the yard ladders. Now at first we were thinking of a full double track main line, since most of the Pensy main lines wear multiple tracks. So here we have one possible route of the main line filled in. I'm imagining that we will have the main yard wrapped around the end of the room, where there is plenty of space for it, even though it's a little bit on the short side, we can curve the yard ladders around the ends. And then this back aisle will extend the city industries around it but on both sides, put a smaller town in the foyer area and another one in the family room. And this would be a junction with a short branch line to a harbor. One of the things which he thought was highly desirable on his list, but he wasn't sure if there's gonna be room for it. And another thing that he asked for was river valleys. So I included two on this plan, the area along this back wall, which is a little bit awkward to use because of the width of it. I figured we could have a broad, but fairly shallow valley and then a stone arch bridge based on a very much cut down version of the Rockville Bridge. And that would fit along this wall and then over the other side of the aisle, a much deeper valley with a tall trestle crossing it. And I was also thinking that there could be a small river running through the town in this area. And the idea is to complete the continuous run via a lower deck with staging underneath the main yard. Now, although I haven't shown them in this plan, we're thinking that in order to get enough vertical separation, we're gonna need helixes in both locations. Although they don't necessarily have to be very tall because we can gain a certain amount of height in the main lines at the two ends of the loop around this area 
and along this wall and back. And we're also thinking that we will keep the family room area to a single deck fairly high up. That way you can have his widescreen TV and his entertainment center underneath it. Now, when I showed him this design, there were two extra things that he asked for. He was wondering whether it would be possible to have a representation of a steel mill in this area along this wall. And it's a little bit tight. Actually, it's very tight. But for the next plan, I decided to look into seeing if that would be possible to get a reasonable representation of one. And also he wanted to know if this area in front of the stairs was a good site for another deep valley. And in this case, I had to tell him no, because I needed that length to get a decent town in this area. Otherwise there'd be no room for a proper siding. But I suggested that we could have a low level diorama in this area at the bottom of the helix containing a deep river valley. So as visitors came down the stairs, the layout would look like it was double decked. And also at this point, I suggested that we look into the possibility of dropping it from a double track to a single track main for a couple of reasons. Firstly, in many places, it's very tight. Both the helix locations here and here, it's gonna be very tight getting a double track helix in and also the turn back curve on the peninsula. Now dropping to a single track main line would give us a little bit more room at each of these locations and also would shorten the yard approaches because we can reduce the number of crossovers needed. And each crossover is at least two feet long in HO scale. My thinking was that instead of representing part of the Pensy's main line, we're depicting a secondary loop line built to serve a few additional towns. That way we don't have to have a huge amount of through traffic. We can just concentrate more on the locals and just run through trains when we want to. But by saying that it's a line that's connected up both ends instead of a stub ended branch line, if we decide we want to run a heavy through traffic one day, we can just assume that Engineering Works has closed one track of the main line, so some of the through traffic is being diverted this way. And that way we get the best of both worlds. And we thought about it for a while and said, yes, he likes the idea, but make sure the passing sidings are really long. Instead of going to a fully single track plan, what I've done is I've left much of the length double. After arriving on the scenic deck, up this helix, this industrial town in the foyer area becomes the start of double track and then the double track runs all the way through the main yard and through the industrial area before becoming single again. So then we have most of the visible main line doubled, but all the critical areas are now single to give us more space. And as a result, I've been able to thin down the end of the peninsula by a few inches to give us a little more space in the industrial area over this side, where I really didn't have enough room to start with. Now note how I haven't drawn in everything accurately. In most cases, the turnouts are drawn in just to make sure that they fit, although only one end of the yard has been treated that way. This end will be a series of long curved turnouts. And the geometry has been set out with fast tracks turnouts in mind, and all the curved turnouts are the same size. They are the 5035 number eights. The idea being that if he decides to build them himself, he doesn't have to buy a whole lot of jigs. Now, in order to give a little more 3D interest in the area around the back of the aisle, I've used elevation to separate the industries. I've put the main line on a city viaduct, and then the industrial trackage can be four inches lower down at street level. And not only does that keep the industrial switching out of the way of the main line trains, but it adds a lot of interest with the extra level, and was fairly common in dense city areas anyway. Now the biggest change in the location of the main line, if you follow the single track around over the canyon scene and around the stairs, we can see that I have put in a single lap helix under the stairs. The idea of that is that all the way from the end of the city viaduct, we can start dropping down about a 2% grade. And this extra lap of helix gives us another four inches of elevation change. So by the time we get to the family room, we are low enough that the steel mill spurs can pass through the wall and under the section of benchwork along the other side. So that allows us to use backdrop flats to represent the steel mill while still having a lot more capacity on all the spurs, which should make enough of a difference to allow us a believable representation of the steel mill in this area. Now this single lap helix under the stairs also has a second purpose. 
if we imagine an operator following his train around the main line, he gets to this point here as it crosses over the trestle, he's probably going to want to watch the entire train cross the trestle because it's a really cool scene. And then he has to get all the way around the outside of the layout before it reappears. Now this single lap helix wastes some time, causing the train to take longer to reappear, thus giving our operator time to get there first. Now it's often been said that the worst thing about a helix is the length of time that a train disappears for. Whereas here we run into that rare situation where we want to waste the time, so we turn it into a benefit rather than a disadvantage. And the remainder of this helix will of course be in this corner, but since there's going to be some complicated point work in this location at the top of the helix, I don't want to start the grade until a little bit later. So I have elongated the helix, allowing us to lose more height before it reappears under this critical point work. And note how I've extended it just far enough to miss this central column. Now let's move on to the lower deck. Here we see what I was talking about earlier, putting a relatively small diorama at the base of the stairs that the main line will run through giving us one area where we have two scenic decks. And that allows for another deep river valley that the customer wanted. Now it can be either double or single track. If we go to double track, we can either put a turnout at the bottom of the helix so it's effectively a passing siding rather than double main line. Or we can go back to double track in this helix all the way. And then the main staging yard is under the widest area of bench work where the main yard is. And approximately half of the tracks can run all the way around the sidewall as well, making them nice and long. And the other half of the tracks will be for local trains, somewhat shorter. I've also shown how some auxiliary stub-ended staging tracks can be fitted in this area if you want to. And another thing that I always try to include wherever feasible is to put reversing loops in both directions in my staging area, allowing trains to reappear in the opposite direction if desired. Now at this point, the customer and I were both getting quite excited about the way this plan was taking shape. But unfortunately, an unexpected change in the customer's situation means that it's likely that they're going to be moving. So this basement will no longer be available. So as a result, he asked me to stop work on this plan and to hold off until he knows whether he's going to still be in this house or a different house. So who knows, I might find myself with a completely different space in which he would like to fit something along the lines of the same layout. So it's entirely possible that this plan will be resurrected at some point in one form or another. But in the meantime, I thought there were enough worthwhile ideas in this plan to be worth presenting. So before signing off, I will just show the plans without being defaced by all the annotations. Here is the main level. Feel free to pause the video if you want to take a longer look at it. And here is the staging level. So I will just sign off here and hope to see you again next week. Thanks for watching and bye for now.